A class, this is the process we're going to be using for writing document-based questions. So we wrote this document-based question in class together. Um, so the beginning is just instructions for um, a document-based question, what you need to have um, in your response, and then the prompt is evaluate the extent to which strategies used by the rulers of the Ottoman and Russian empires to legitimize and consolidate their power between 1500 and 1800 were similar. So class, the first step to writing a DBQ is obviously to um, break down the prompt. So you're going to circle task words. So in this prompt, evaluate is the task word. Extent means you have to give some sense of degree, right? So extremely similar, extremely different. And then underline key information. Um, you may want to box parameters as well. So key information might be something like Ottoman Empire, Russian Empire, uh, between the period 1500 and 1800. That would be something that we would look for. So this is my annotations of document one. So as you can see, uh, document one is uh, from Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, and it um, kind of gives you the description. So it's addressed to King Francis I of uh, France in 1526. Um, so I felt confident enough about this document that in addition to doing the mandatory summary, which you see just right beneath um, the box, I put the summary is, is something that's one sentence. Suleiman lists his conquests to Francis I. I also start to do SOAP, um, and this is because I feel confident about this document. I know the purpose of the document, you know, Suleiman the Magnificent is flexing, so to speak. Um, he's saying he's that B um, uh, in response to King Francis I, and I just happen to feel confident about that. That's why I do the SOAP analysis as well. Um, but in reality, when you're just reading through these documents and you're trying to decipher, decipher or decipher the, the meaning of the document, you only want one sentence uh, that you can stick with, uh, something tangible. So just a summary, a quick summary of what's going on. Summary, Suleiman lists his conquests to Francis I, um, his extensive conquests, actually. So document two is written by a Flemish nobleman um, who was sent as a diplomat to the Ottoman Empire. We discussed this at length, um, the significance of this. Um, we did soap analysis about this particular document as well. And so I feel confident about this document as well. So in addition to summarizing it, and my summary is actually on the left-hand corner, so um, you can look, check it out there. But I also do SOAP analysis because I want to source this document as well. Um, so the S um, in SOAP, speaker, um, I talk about how the fact he's a European ambassador at the Ottoman court and the significance of this. I talk about the occasion uh, he's writing at the height of Ottoman power as Ottomans threaten Europe. I talk about the audience, Austrian government, and the purpose of the document to warn. Our books. Uh, so um, the summary of document three, it's, it's below. You can see it actually, uh, the image is panning out, but it's right below the actual image. And the summary is just troops pay homage to the Sultan. Um, so I actually go and try to soap and source this document because I ended up feeling confident about this in the essay and I'm trying to look for as much uh, points as possible and so in case one of my other sourcings is views, viewed by, as weak by the AP graders, then this one can possibly pick it up. Um, but uh, there it is. Troops pay homage to the Sultan. Okay, so document four is written by Peter the Great. Uh, he's the famous Russian czar. Um, a czar is another word for Russian emperor. Um, so uh, you can see that I conducted soap analysis on this. I um, physically write soap at the bottom. I give a summary, a one sentence summary of the, um, the source um, because I have the intention of sourcing this document. Um, so remember, sourcing a document includes a summary plus a point of view statement, and a point of view statement includes all the elements of SOAP. Um, so you can see this uh, represented um, here in document four.
in document five, I plan on just summarizing it. I actually didn't put the summary there, to be honest, because I was running low on time, and this is a lot of work to undertake. So I didn't put the summary there. But just know that it's going to appear in um, the essay, that, my sample essay that I write for you. So this um, document six, you can see the summary that I put. Again, it's a one sentence summary. Um, you know, just know that as I'm working this document, this is taking a while, I'm going through it, I'm circling key terms, I'm underlining key information. Um, and so I'm working the document. So this is the step that we're, um, that we're certainly in, working the documents, going through the documents, uh, trying to find as much information as possible, finding documents that we want to source and documents that we're near, merely going to use to cite. Or uh, another way of saying that is we're just going to use the summary of that document and incorporate that into the essay. Um, so this is document seven. I actually decide to source document seven because I think Catherine the Great's a fascinating character. It's just a random choice that I decided to source. So as you can see, I work the document. I summarize the document in one sentence. Catherine the Second discusses the role of a sovereign in Russian society. And then I do a SOAP analysis of it. Um, so I say she's a powerful Russian czar, much like Peter the Great. Um, I, the occasion, it's a time of consolidation and expansion of empire, audiences the people of Russia, and her purpose is to establish her power and legitimacy to rule. So um, I, the next step after you work the documents, you would actually write your thesis. And so the thesis you'll actually see in my essay, I don't know why I didn't put it here, but um, you would put it above the pre-write. Um, so in this pre-write, I divide my thesis into three argument category categories. You can have like two argument categories and then just start grouping the documents. Which do you think um, talks about that argument category or which do you think you can might. even start writing your topic sentence about like absolutism, military might, or promotion based on merit. So here you can actually see um, my document based question essay. So my response to the prompt, my response to all the documents. Um, so you can see the contextualization um, right after the prompt. Uh, the contextualization I would try to plan out in the pre-write. There's a space in the pre-write, so go ahead and go back to that and see the space where you would plan out the contextualization. Uh, I would write the thesis statement uh, before I start organizing um, the documents, uh, just uh, kind of like a rough draft of a thesis statement in the planning phase. And then after I organize the documents to argument categories and so forth, then I would actually start writing, um, knowing which documents I want to uh, complete a sourcing of or conduct SOAP analysis of, in other words. So I color code this, um, I make it um, pretty plain which documents I merely slight, cite. So merely citing a document, the way we do it is we just include that one uh, sentence summary in our uh, paragraph uh, supporting a topic sentence and which documents I source. So sourcing, remember, uh, includes a summary of the document uh, which I highlight in yellow, and then SOAP analysis. And I give you the key for um, the different elements of SOAP analysis, and you can check it out. Notice that I also don't necessarily conduct all, or do all four letters of SOAP analysis for every document that I'm sourcing, uh, but I sure as hell try. Um, so go ahead and take a look at this essay and read it. It, to be honest, I really wanted to do this document-based question essay because I thought it was really um, a cool prompt. There's a lot of cool figures in this um, uh, document-based essay, and also it's going to help me cover um, some content. So although we haven't covered European exploration in the 19th century, we've covered it in the 16th century. And so we're definitely going to be talking this um, after we talk about the Enlightenment, and then we talk about the Industrial Revolution, or I'm sorry, nationalism, and then the Industrial Revolution, and then we're going to talk about this. But it's certainly going to be very relevant. So just pay attention, and I'm actually going to give you suggested readings, or maybe make them mandatory readings um, in the description. Uh, 
So the uh, prompt for this document-based question is evaluate the extent to which the motives used by European states to expand their empires in the 16th century were similar to those used in the 19th century. So right away, um, you know, we should, of course, break down the prompt. Um, you break down the prompt uh, using the technique that I showed you. Um, but we know that the argument categories are going to be about um, European um, motives. Uh, so um, that should go be going in the back of your ahead. So at this document, document one, I didn't feel very confident about, so I just summarized it because I'm just planning on citing it in my DBQ. So document two is, is this uh, image of Christopher Columbus bringing um, a cross and uh, encountering uh, natives in the Caribbean for the first time. Um, so I didn't feel confident about sourcing this document and I intend just to cite it, meaning I'm just going to write a one sentence summary in my document based question essay. So I just write the summary of what this document depicts or shows. All right, so you see my summaries of both document three and document four. Um, I don't feel confident in document three, so I'm just going to summarize it and plan on just citing it in my document based question essay, but document four I feel confident about. So I actually conduct SOAP analysis of document four. You don't see it here because I didn't feel like I had enough space, but Cecil Rhodes is an incredibly fascinating character, has said incredibly um, racist things. Um, and, you know, he's actually, um, you know, the person who's, the, the Rhodes Scholarship is named after him. So to be a Rhodes Scholar is this incredible achievement. It's something that I wanted to do, but did not accomplish, so to speak. Um, yes. <laughs> All right, so these are my summaries for document five and document six. I soap both of these documents because I think both uh, George uh, Washington Williams and Jules Ferry are incredibly interesting characters, and I've included, um, you know, links in the description um, about their lives, um, very interesting lives uh, that I will certainly be talking about briefly in class. Uh, Jules Ferry, um, you know, was a prime minister of France, and he had this famous series of debates with Clemenceau on uh, French colonial policy that I had to present on in French class. Um, so I think they're uh, both incredibly interesting characters, um, and so I soap and source both of them, but you don't see the sourcing there. All right, so this is the summary for document seven. Document seven is written by an English economist. Um, so um, I felt passionate about this one too. So I sourced this document as well. Um, you can see my sourcing in the actual essay. I don't actually break it down into soap, but that's the expectation for you guys to do. Um, and so there it is. So this is my colonization pre-write. Um, you can see that I broke uh, the, uh, or actually before this, I would have written my thesis and you'll see my thesis momentarily. Um, but I break uh, my thesis into basically two argument categories. I want to talk about two motives, economic and then um, the desire to convert or uh, to forcibly uh, make people assimilate. Um, and so I include those two motives below. Um, and then I sort the documents um, into basically those two categories, whether that they're going to support um, what I have to say um, about those motives or their going to talk about them in general. And then I also provide a list of the documents um, that I am going to soap or source. Um, so you can see that as well. All right, so this is the actual essay that I write. Uh, in response to the prompt, you can see the contextualization paragraph is huge. Uh, my thesis statement as well. And you can go ahead and look at all, um, you know, how I structured the essay, which documents I chose to sort, the topic sentences, read the comments in the margins, um, and definitely internalize both the content and the structure of this essay. All right, so this is the actual writing structure that I use to organize both my DBQs, roughly. Uh, the second one is much more organized around this writing structure. And you'll notice that uh, I kind of choose to source two sources and then cite two other sources. Um, and so I'm trying to use all as many documents as possible. So I would recommend as you're going, trying to figure out which documents you want to source, you need to pick at least four. Um, because at the end of the day, you need to have at least three and three done right to get the sourcing point on the document based question. Um, so this is the writing structure I use. I um, begin with contextualization, then I write a thesis, uh, then I go into the argument categories.
Um, so this is the writing structure. It fits more snugly with the second DBQ because I only have two argument categories. I have economic motives and then I have uh, religious motives to convert or uh, the uh, civilizing mission, which I grouped into one topic sentence. And so this would fit more snugly there. Um, but if I had three argument categories, like in the first DBQ, then of course I can maybe soap um, one per uh, paragraph, right? So for each argument category, you want to have a separate paragraph um, with a distinct topic sentence that talks about that argument category um, and that ultimately relates back to the thesis. So if you need more structure, if you honestly, um, you know, struggle a little bit, that's okay then uh, with the writing structure I gave you, that writing structure is more open to you being more creative, uh, to incorporating your own individual analysis and, and getting more creative with your language because to be honest, some of you are really fantastic writers when you try. Um, but some of you um, will need more guidance and then this is the writing structure for you. So I'm going to assign this writing structure to certain students. Um, it's going to be mandatory um, until you can prove uh, that you do well with um, the freedom of the other writing structure.